Hey guys, so I have a uh, interesting one here today. Uh, this thing came out very recently and um, I would have had mine like a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks, if the United States Postal Service hadn't been so um, overwhelmed, let's put it. Um, all that aside, it did finally arrive. Uh, this is the new Funny Playing. See, new every time because, you know, at, 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 at the time of filming it is new. Anyway, um, this is a newer Funny Playing Game Boy Color IPS kit. What's different about this one compared to the previous iteration is the previous iteration used these BlackBerry 9380 screens. They're kind of long and you had them sticking out through the bottom. Which I have one of these right here. Um, obviously the wrong lens on there, but use these screens. Whereas this one is using the BlackBerry Q5 screen, which is much bigger square and it's what we're seeing in the pocket kits. And I did actually just do another Game Boy Color using the same screen, different make of the kit, but you get the idea. Anyway, without further ado, here is what I got. Um, this is, this, this is, this shouldn't represent what you'll actually receive if you were to order one because when this kit was sent to me, um, the, uh, vendor who sent it to me, Retro Game Repair Shop, uh, these things are usually shipped separately from the lenses themselves. So, Retro Game Repair Shop did not have the proper lens in stock when this was sent to me. He sent it to me the same day he got them. The lenses got delayed. So he sent it to me with a different lens. Um, I'm pretty sure that is the only thing different between my kit and the other kits that you might get regardless of who you buy it from. It should be coming with a funny playing lens, whereas mine came with a lens that was made by this company and it is uh, one of the defect batch lenses unfortunately or at least this one is looks like I got two that's what I get for not opening it ahead of time oh yeah they're both like that so there was a defect batch of lenses that have the uh, letters in the color logo just kind of wandering about but anyway other than that it should all be just about the same thing and it should be good enough for this kit I am going to set this one aside for the time being. And then this is what you get with the funny playing kit. You get a nice sleek black ribbon cable adapter, pretty similar to all the other ones that they've been doing, but it looks like they've switched over to black for these new ones. Not sure the reasoning, but I don't disagree with it. You get the LCD itself. largely the same as the previous or every other kit that's coming with one of these. You get two wires for wiring up the button controls. The brightness controls on this kit, it's actually kind of weird. We'll get into that um, later, but um, I'm not sure I like it. You get a adhesive gasket to stick the screen down to the lens um, casing. I'm not going to be using this today and we'll go over why when I get there. And then you get a touch sensor because this thing uses both button controls and a touch sensor. So forgive me for trying to follow along at home because I am gonna be doing things a little bit differently, but I think I should cover the gist of things. Either way, let's go ahead and test the kit out before assembling it. I have already disassembled my Game Boy Color on account of um, I had to do several repairs to this thing, but it is working perfectly now. Uh, got a nice clean power switch, cleaned up all the corrosion uh, on the front and the back of the board. Got new caps, new speaker, the works. It's good to go, working perfectly. Um, I am going to be reshelling this thing into an aftermarket shell. I don't personally have anything against cutting up OEM shells. But I'm not going to do it in this case just because this one, it's kind of gross. I don't really want to touch it. I don't think it's going to clean up that well. I'll save it for another time. It's also kind of sun damaged and I don't know, just not digging it. So 
So I'll be using this gray one that I've had sitting around forever, but don't worry, it's only temporary. Um, Rumor Mill says that Funny Playing is making new shells, and um, I'm, I'm fairly certain this is true. I mean, they, they literally posted a picture of the shell in the listing on their site for this. So, I mean, it's a little bit more than a rumor, but if the uh, trend continues, their new shell will be very excellent. So that is what I will want to use. Anyway, anyway, let us switch to a different game because while that is Pokemon Silver, that is not the game I usually test with. Pokemon Silver is off my desk for some reason. Let's get some baseline power usage reachings. Actually, let's get this stuff out of the way first, setting this aside. Won't be using it. Because like I said, I, um, I think those shells are coming pretty soon, so I don't want to have to try and rip this LCD out. So in place of the adhesive, I am going to be using a 3D printed bracket. This one in particular was designed by, um, I believe it's pronounced Zypher, it's X-I-P-H-E-R. Uh, I will throw a link in the description. Um, technically this bracket is for another kit, but I'm thinking it'll probably still work fine, hopefully. We'll find out, two birds, one stone. Anyway. Keep getting distracted. My apologies. I do genuinely try and make these short. I just, I have lots I want to say. I go on tangents. And I do things like not finding the cables ahead of time. Also, my first time testing this thing on batteries. I've been using the uh, AC plug the whole time. But I had no doubt. I have to clean up that corrosion. Anyway. Anyway. Same place I usually test in the overworld. Uh, we are pulling... Uh, anywhere from 74 to 92 milliamps, 96, 74 to 96 milliamps, pretty decent. Um, well, actually that's not pretty decent. Newer consoles are a little bit more efficient, but that is uh, a to be expected value. That's not, that's not a bad thing. It's not unusually high or unusually low or anything. It is normal. Which is good considering this console did not even work when I started. Okay. So as always, before installing, we want to bench test our kit to make sure all is copacetic. Unlike the other variant of this, uh, not variant, but other kit that uses the same LCD from the other vendor, uh, it looks like this one does require soldering for power. I'm going to try it first without and see if we get anywhere, but we'll probably have to solder. So uh, let us see. Though that could be one of those things where it's um, like a battery sensor or something, I don't know. Never like those connectors. All right, that's on, and we will try out the Game Boy. And yeah, nothing on the screen. So either my kit is bad, or more likely, I still just have to solder up that auxiliary power wire. To do so, I am going to pull that game out. Oh. 
something happened. I accidentally flipped it on and my uh, power supply zeroed out. It scared me. But it was just the uh, Game Boy Color trying to drain the resid residual current. Anyway, okay, so we have to solder a wire from here to here. Uh, unfortunately, this only comes with two wires. I think, I think it should come with three. That seems like a little bit of an oversight, but I have a drawer full of wires, so I think we're going to be good. It's just a question of finding the wire that I feel is best suited for this. You know, you got to find a good wire that's the right length. Or you can just cut down one of the wires it comes with. These things are plenty long. And you'd think I'd learned my lesson by now, but I haven't actually really read the instructions. I just kind of skimmed, so... Maybe that is exactly what you're supposed to do. Oh, by the way, I feel like this is important to mention. If this is your first time soldering, like if you're getting a um, backlight kit for your Game Boy and you've literally never held a soldering iron before, do yourself a favor and get like a solder practice kit to uh, warm up on. I do actually have a video, well it's a stream, on that if you want to watch it, but soldering is a lot of feel there's a lot of feel to it and experience it's it's really easy because i make it look easy because i've been doing this for 15 years but once you once you get the feel for it uh it's a lot easier it's better than you know trying to pick up soldering on your game boy which they aren't that cheap anymore working colors are what like 35 to 40 bucks on the regular and then this kit's another 55 bucks, 50 bucks, I think. I have it right in front of me, I could just look. $59 from Retro Game Repair Shop. It's probably a little bit cheaper if you order direct from Funny Playing. But then again, shipping, because it's coming from China. Anyway, point is, spend $3 on a practice kit and learn how to solder on that instead of learning, or I guess realizing that you don't know how to solder, and uh, ruining your $60 backlight kit, and or your $45 Game Boy. Neither of those sound like fun options. And believe me, I know, because I have stuff in my parts bin that other people have tried to work on and failed. Anyway, okay. Let us try this out. So that wire gets soldered to the C pin on the battery switch. Power switch, excuse me. I suppose it is technically a battery switch too. In. We'll fold that that way, turn that on, turn that on, and hello, there it goes. I guess I still need to do a little bit of work on that power switch. I was getting scared for a second, okay. So in the overworld here, on the default brightness level with zero, I, we'll have to test. I don't know if the funny playing kit has um, memory now and that it'll remember your settings, but on the default brightness level, assuming you do the minimum amount of soldering, it is pulling 373, 338. 
as low as 338 and as high as I thought I saw 397, 401. 338 to 401. And I'm saying this out loud because it's much easier for me when I'm reviewing the video later to um, just listen to it instead of trying to read the number off the power supply because I'm sorry guys, I, I really do wish it was bigger. That would be cool. It has this huge screen, but the actual information that I care about is so small. I still need to look into modifying that. Um, anyway, I will put all this information in the spreadsheet linked in the description uh, if you want to take a look at that because we're going to take a look at the before power consumption and the after power consumption to extrapolate what kind of battery life you get. So for example, since before, it was about 100 milliamps and now it's about 380 milliamps you can expect you know one quarter of the battery life so if you for example used to get 20 hours out of a stock game boy now you'll probably get about five um regardless though that is a lot i am very not happy with that number um Maybe it'll go down when we have the brightness adjusted, so we'll have to continue with the install and play with that in a moment. But now that we know the kit is working, we are safe to continue. Into the next portion here, which is going to be, I'm just gonna set that aside someplace safe, the case. So, if you are the skittish type who does not want to trim your Game Boy shell, totally get it. You can grab an aftermarket one. Um, there are more OEM shells than aftermarket shells, so limited number isn't exactly the best excuse. But, you know, since these were made millions at the time. Anyway, uh, it is still... A lot easier to stomach cutting up an aftermarket shell but um, long long-winded way of saying uh, like I mentioned before there are going to be IPS ready Game Boy Color shells if you want to wait I've uh, I've had really good experience with funny Plains other shells so I think it'll be good I think it'll be worth the wait but if you don't want to do that let's get cutting so I'm going to use my usual method of just score and snap. We need to remove this entire frame. I am probably going to do most of it off camera in the name of expedience and um, you know, just in fact doing it cleanly because I have a tool that will make very short work of this. It is called a well, actually, it's called a rotary tool, but most people call it a Dremel. But I suppose it's like a Kleenex versus a facial tissue. Anyway, just got to do that around the whole area. Uh, we also have to... Let me grab... Sharpie here. So we have to do this whole area. Let me switch my cheat sheet back. Just double check. So this whole area that I'm marking off, we need to cut down flush. Uh, we leave this very top part because that'll help us position the screen. Leave the screw post, as much of it as possible, on both sides, even though I just marked that one, try and leave as much as possible. And then we also need to, because these are larger screens uh, that are larger than the stock lens, are larger than the stock display, we need to prepare the viewing window for a larger image. So for example, here's a stock lens. 
here's the one that comes with it. You can see the bezels are a lot wide, or skinnier, I guess, because the screen is a lot wider on both the top, bottom, left, and right. So we'll want to trim that up. And I'm going to do the same thing. I am going to mark it off just so you see my inability to draw a straight line unassisted should not be a problem but we don't need to cut off too much just just enough if you cut too much though as long as you don't like go off the edges it should be fine because you won't see it except for under the um unless you have a clear lens or something. But I'm just going to do the same thing, just going to keep drawing lines with this, and then I'll snap it off. Um, you've seen me do it before, but just to reiterate, we just made one score mark, loosely following my line, and then I just keep repeating that exact same score mark until it gets deeper and deeper. And if you really want to, you can do the whole way through, but that'll take forever. Uh, so once you've gotten, I don't know, three or four really good deep scores in there, or, you know, about 20 light score passes, you can take, and I don't think I've scored this enough. Try and snap. Yeah, I didn't score it enough. This is not breaking at the right spot. But you can see right there where it starts to break at the score. That's exactly what you want. And then you just keep doing that around the whole thing. And uh, you'll get there eventually. But for now, I'm going to pause briefly, get this cleaned up off camera. Um, and when I, when I come back, it'll be nice and ready. Right, so I think it came out mostly all right. Um, I did that thing where I tried to do it quickly instead of doing it properly, and then I had to do it the proper way anyway, so I saved literally zero time and, in fact, ended up wasting time um, because I had to do it twice. If you don't have time to do it right, you'll find time. Anyway, this bracket will fit in here just like that. Oh. With this, if you're not using this bracket, you want to leave this little chunk of plastic here. But if you are using the bracket, you can go ahead and cut it off. those two. Again, only cut these parts if you're using a bracket. If not, you're going to regret cutting those. Anyway. Another cool thing is we can check our cuts with one of the lenses. You should be able to just pop the lens in there and see the uh, cut line it's kind of hard to tell. Let me peel this off. Ugh. I hate when only the backing comes up because that's sticky in the middle too. Yeah, nice. Oh, I've got one more corner. Let's try that. Nope, of course not. Okay. So, maybe we'll get lucky, no. All right, so we got the sticky side on here, unfortunately. I don't really like saving this stuff, but at this point I have so much of it that I guess it doesn't really matter. And you can do that. Okay, that was actually easier than what I had planned. So now, put the lens in there, 
and you can just test your fit. Like I can see that I just did not trim enough. So I need to go back and trim um, and my cat is apparently hungry. The uh, way to do that is to keep doing what we literally just did. Um, score, cut, or you can sit here and whittle away. Just keep in mind proper knife handling. And you do want a straight line, not whatever that is. But basically just keep cutting and check it again. See, now this side is fine aside from the corner. I still got to do the top and the left side, so I will be back in just a moment when I finish that up. Right, so plenty of cutting later. I think we are all good to go. You can see on the inside that there's plenty of clearance on every side, except for on this side, but there's still enough clearance. Uh, so what I am going to do to help with that I am going to take a black sharpie and color in the inside of the bezel. Now a paint pen or just straight up paint would be ideal, but you got to work with what you got and I have a black sharpie. And all this is going to do is make the plastic less visible from the outside if you're holding it at an angle. This is 100% unnecessary. It is purely cosmetic. And the darker your shell color, the uh, less necessary that is. That's all we want. Right. So here is where I would use the adhesive, were I using the adhesive. Get that little plastic shearing goat there. And oh, it looks like I have to trim just a wee bit more. I have to cut some of the uh, LED shroud. But oh, like most of these mods, it's it's just a lot of trial and error until it fits. Once it's in there, we should be good. And there we go. Don't forget to peel off the uh, screen protector. I'm going to reuse the stock buttons that I did start cleaning up, but clearly did not finish. Loose junk broken off. <laughs> and uh, then I'm going to inhale all of that because I just aerosolized it. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, I'm just dumb. It's not a problem. Uh, don't worry, it happens to the best of us. Okay. And actually, before continuing, I think we should do the um, 
Breitnish wires. So I am actually going to use a multimeter to find these. Even though there is a guide, I like using different um, points. So cheapo multimeter, continuity mode, so it beeps. We want, ooh, whoops. Select, you can use this P12 point right here that you can't even see because I'm out of frame. You can use this P12 solder point right here, but I prefer to use, I think this one's on this side, yep. It is this bottom pin, or this via right here in this group of one, two, three, four, five. It is this bottom one right here. And then start, same thing, you can use P13 or you can come over here and of these three vias it is the leftmost one or you can go all the way up here if you want it's one of these that one but we'll use that one and my understanding is that soldering is required for brightness controls um, even if you're using a touch sensor because that doesn't come pre-soldered like on some other kits. Oh, and this was the wrong tip for this. Oh well, it's too late. It's already hot. And I can make it work. Soldering to these vias is a little bit difficult, especially if you aren't doing yourself any favors and are using the wrong soldering tip. A uh, J tip, a little curve, would be quite a bit easier than this one because this one is just completely flat, so you have to get it at the perfect angle. Um, but the problem is these vias are covered so you have to get solder in the hole just to conduct heat you can't just come in from the top you have to get in there but once you have them tinned it's easy enough to solder to them just like anything else ow a little bit of flux burned off and splash some solder into my finger That's soldered. We can come in. And just like that. So there's solder in the hole. It's easy enough to get it molten again. Just get it. Get it nice and wet, jam the wire in there, let it solidify, and you're good to go. Give it a little tug, make sure it's nice and sturdy. I mean, don't like really reef on it, you don't want to rip it off. And I completely forgot to do the other side. We have to do this side of the ribbon now. This one is going to be select. This one is going to be start. These wires are plenty long, but if you do end up cutting one for the uh, power wire back here, take care that you might run out of slack. I mean, it'll still work because don't forget you have to fold this, but you know, it's worth keeping in mind. If you're like me and you have little bits of solder, make sure you clear those out. They could short on something and that would be bad. And 
then we'll just fold that up on itself when we fold it. Should be good. When connecting ribbons like this, we always want to squeeze them together. Fingers on both sides. Not just push down like that. That is that is a good way to break your screen. These screens are insanely delicate, despite how it looks like I'm throwing them around up here. Trust me, I am being gentle. just looks a little bit misleading on account of my camera being mm, about seven inches from my desk. Alright. That is the right tip, but the wrong size. So very few people seem to know about this, but these are actually JIS screws, not Phillips. You can remove JIS with a Phillips driver and vice versa, but if you do not have the proper size driver on a GIS screw, you will strip it out stupid easy. You won't even know what happened and it'll already be stripped. I already turned my iron off, but let's do the touch sensor. That's that's the J ones so that go away. Turn that back on. And let me find that touch sensor. All right, so I have never been a fan of these touch sensors. This is uh, the ribbon cable design touch sensors. They're garbage. And if you like them, you should feel bad. Um, what we're going to do instead, well, actually, no, we'll do the ribbon cable. But uh, one thing to make it a little bit easier is I'm going to take some of the adhesive that we removed from the screen, because this is going to go right here, and we're going to bend it that way. We're going to stick that down. I'm going to cut this, give me a nice flat first, we're going to stick that down in that corner so that we can actually adhere this to the shell. And this is just the adhesive that we removed from the middle of the lens. If you're worried about the adhesive, ruining the sensitivity of the touch sensor, then, um, well, I've got news for you because we're putting it through plastic as is, so I think it's going to be fine. But if you actually have the stuff, which most people don't, and the only reason I do is because of Game Boy modding, if you have a, a roll of copper tape uh, you can cut off a little strip of that, solder it to a wire, and then make yourself a much, much more manageable touch sensor like one of these things. These work so much better, and it should work just the same in one of these. It is the exact same thing, just more difficult to make. Well... Not more difficult to make, but 
must be made by hand. That is. Can't necessarily be made by a machine, whereas this can be made by a machine. So we're going to solder that right there. Just like that. And I already hate how that has to bend, but here we are. Peel off my tape. And you can put it through the IR lens if you prefer. I think that putting it there is a little bit silly, but I suppose I don't actually use infrared. And you can stick that down to your shell. If you're using one of the brackets, it's going to sit on top of the bracket, so it's going to be a little bit proud, but we'll make it work. And where is your housing? Six screws, same as the huge. I don't like how this shell goes together, but that is a commentary on this cheap aftermarket shell that I have had for um, probably years at this point. I don't even know where I got it. I mean, not probably AliExpress, but like, I don't know what specific vendor or anything. I've long since lost the buttons and stickers that came with it. My battery terminal is a little bit bent. Shouldn't matter too much, but I'll try bending it back. You can pick up replacement battery terminals, by the way, not just the left side, but the right side too. Uh, those are new. We need a lens. Now, common sense would dictate that I don't actually stick this down because I have already said that this is not the permanent shell for this, but I'm confident in my ability to remove a lens. I am not confident in my ability to remove a screen once stuck down. And that actually looks really good. I didn't have anything in mind with this shell when I got it. I'm so glad I did. Uh, are those? Those aren't the right batteries. Mm, but I guess I'll have to do. Okay. So we're going to use the trusty Lottas here. Like usual, not fully charged, not fully depleted, but it should be around 80% or so. 
still works. And actually, that alignment out of the box, I see zero issues with it. Um, if anything, it's a little bit low. So hopefully the uh, the funny playing lenses are the exact same. They probably aren't, but hopefully they are. If they are, Zypher, you should adjust your design just a hair up and then it'll work for both models. Uh, funny playing and the uh, OC. Before, there it is. Something from EverDrive and then my Omega, or my Junior, excuse me. So, oh, that's interesting. My select is um, stuck down. It's probably going to be a problem for something like this. Flash cart may have just died. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that's concerning. This is the one that I thought I just fixed. It could be having problems with this being my start button stuck, stuck down. Yeah, I think it just doesn't like that uh, select button, excuse me. Not start. And that might actually be the Game Boy. I didn't really check that. I should have. Yeah, that's a concern. I am going to have to take this apart. I will be right back. All right, so I'm not 100% sure what's going on. Everything looks good, but it might be shorting against these solder points so to combat that we are going to insulate with a little bit of the plastic that i removed from the screen lens and then i'm gonna reassemble and i'll be right there all right so i don't think it was that insulation uh but insulation certainly doesn't help so unfortunately I just swapped out the board. I will do some more testing on this later, but given that it did have corrosion, um, that could just still be the problem and there's something I missed somewhere, but save it for later. Anyway, new Game Boy Color board in there. Boots right up. Just did the exact same thing that I did before, solder on the power wire and then the start and select. But notice when I boot into Pokemon, it doesn't just auto jump on my bike. I can press select and press select. Huh? Huh? Neat, right? Anyway, um, let's try the Junior. And again, we are on nickel metal hydride batteries, which usually uh, doesn't work too well with flash carts and IPS kits and I'm still not having any luck, and I know that at least one of these, the Easy Flash Junior, works on um, this Game Boy. I have used an Easy Flash Junior on this Game Boy. Not this one in particular, though. And I am not having a good night. Let me go grab the other one. Uh huh, uh huh. If this one doesn't work, we know it's the flash part. Okay, so my easy, my easy flash just fucked up again. That's fine. Let's do the usual battery and array of testing here. This is the scrolling bars test. You've heard me say it before, you've heard me say it a thousand times, but I'll say it again. What this does is this pl 
plays a constant pattern across the screen, and then when the S in the word scrolling passes the left side, it issues an LCD reset command. The reason we test for this is because some of the earlier kits handled this particularly poorly, but this kit is handling it fantastic. What we're looking for is any stuttering or skipping or any like weird artifacts going down, and there is absolutely zero except for the single frame drop when the reset command is issued, which is expected behavior. Uh, well, that's ideal behavior, actually, not just expected. <clears throat> The stock screen actually handles resets poor, poorly in comparison. I mean, it still just drops a frame. It just takes a little bit longer to pick back up again. Uh, we did the scrolling bars. Let's do... I don't have the test suite on here. It's on one of these things. I just know it. Let's try the other one. No, I don't think it's on here either. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, past the scrolling bars test, let's see if it handles Legend of Zelda. And then we'll have to leave the 160p test suite for next time. Uh, what am I looking for? Zelda.gb. And this is the EverDrive, no longer the Easy Flash. That one, I haven't quite found the power switch for these by feel yet. That one, okay. And so what we're checking here, we're looking for two things. This guy's chain usually leaves some weird artifacting um, when the screen transitions. And due to the pixel overdrive on the older kits that use these 3080 screens, or 9380 screens, um, there would be some, like, ghosting on the image, on the green grass. And I do see a little bit, just a hint of ghosting. Uh, but nowhere near as bad as the older kits. And I don't see any weird artifacts with his chain. The last video, the last backlight kit I did, seemed to handle the chain just a little better. I don't know. I think it was this one. So let me um, let me pull that one up and we'll put it side by side. Since I have two flash cards. Or I could just go get the game. And Zelda GP. Oh, fudge. Let's try that again. No. Zelda.gb, there we go. That. Can we start the correct save this time? Yeah. Yeah, so having these side by side, I can see that this kit is actually handling the transparency of this dude's chain a little bit better. Uh, so how this is supposed to work is the original Game Boy didn't have a way of achieving transparency with palettes. So game devs often took advantage of a um, quirk, if you will, 
of the original LCD screens in that they just had really terrible pixel response time. So if you flip this on and off really quick, as quick as you can, it looks transparent. Um, the newer screens just don't reproduce that well because they have significantly better refreshes. Uh, so that results in flickering instead of transparency. This one is a much better effect. Uh, this is the one chip kit. Uh, whereas this is the funny playing kit. I will throw a link in the description to this um, Well, I will throw a link in the description to my write-up on all of these kits, so You know, I mean That's not to say this one's bad. I just side by side comparing only those two things this kits better, but aside from that I haven't really seen any problems with this one. So let us Try the brightness control. So I don't quite remember. I think you have to do select. Oh, this is a terrible game for this. We're just going to put it right here. So you do select and you hit the sensor. And that brings the brightness up, maybe. Ooh, I don't remember how it works, and I'm not having any luck. So you hold start and select, and you can switch between the palette, the pixel palette modes. There are five of them. Off is my favorite. But you can have vertical lines. Uh, you can have this kind of weird. I don't actually know how to describe it. It looks... Oh, you know what? They might be doing... They might be doing the uh, scanline emulation. Not pixel grid, but scanline where it takes the average of the two pixels next to it and then puts that average between them. Um, but that was doing it for vertical. This is much darker lines. You can see it decreases the brightness significantly. And then this is what we're used to on the other kits, I believe, where it's just the actual grid itself. And then off again. But I think I need to go look up how this brightness control works. Now I could might be in the wrong spot. I think I was just in the wrong spot. There we go. So if you press and hold the sensor, and then, come on. Oh, there you go. You have to press and hold start, and then you hit the sensor, and it'll bring the brightness up. Nope, it was doing it the first time. We gotta find the spot again. Nope, not having any luck. Can't do it anymore. I think you have to press and hold for a second, then do the sensor. There. Yeah, I was just hitting the wrong spot again. Press and hold for a second. Undo the sensor. There you go. And so does the sensor do anything on its own? Oh, you can just tap it to cycle through the brightnesses. And does press and hold do anything? Yeah, press and hold brings it to the max. Oh, press and hold steps it backwards. Okay, we were just already at the minimum when I did the press and hold. Is there a long press? Yeah, and then long press does pallets. Okay. So, you do not need the start and select if you don't want to solder those buttons. You can do everything through the touch sensor. It's just kind of tedious. 
takes a lot longer to cycle through the um, pixel palette, uh, pixel options. But there you go. I'm assuming, well, I'm hoping that future kits will come with that sensor soldered onto the ribbon. Now, I suppose it's kind of a moot point because you have to solder the power wire too. So, with this kit, you need to do soldering. That's, I don't think there's a way around that. But otherwise, I am very pleased with what I see. Um, unfortunately, this one does not have the on-screen display that this other one does, where select A and B, there you go. You can do that and um, like adjust the position of the image on the screen itself, up and down, uh, just in case you don't get centered. This one doesn't have that. Uh, this one also doesn't have the color palette adjustment feature, which I, I don't want to say I'm happy that it doesn't have that feature because I think cutting features is never a good thing. Well, it's not really cutting a feature if they never had it in the first place, but um, it'd be nice to have in case I want to use it. And since the other kit has it and it's an alternative, you know, do what you will. But that being said, literally never used it and I doubt most people have either. Um, really the only big thing is that you can't adjust the uh, position of the image on screen, but that should be a moot point with their shells coming out. So overall, do I recommend the kit? You know what? I, I think I do. It's a pretty good looking kit, but I don't think you can go wrong with either, to be honest. Um, otherwise, I think that's all I've got. I have, I have to go ahead and get this compiled and uploaded. I will be doing another video very shortly. We will take a look at the funny playing lens itself because, again, this lens was a defect lens from another kit. This lens does not come with this kit. I just, at the time when this was shipped, there weren't any lenses for these kits, so I needed an alternative or I just wouldn't have a lens. Um, but I should have another lens coming in very shortly. If USPS doesn't lose it again, that should be tomorrow, which will probably be before, be before I even get this video uploaded, but then you'll just have two videos side by side. Um, but beyond that, I think that's it for now. So thanks for watching, guys. Have an excellent night. Be sure to check out the description. There's tons of links to other videos and my write-up on all these other kits. This one included a link to my spreadsheet with all the power usage measurements, a link to the test ROMs I used, so on and so forth. And whoop, I'm knocking shit over. And one last thing before before I go. Um, someone brought something to my attention recently, and I'm not going to go into details, but I will just say I'm, I'm glad that some of you are um, enjoying my videos. I'm, I'm glad it helps, even if it's just background noise. Um, and you know what? If, if you want to fool around with your partner, that's fine too. Just please stop telling me about it. I don't need to hear about that. I don't need to hear that you're watching my videos in the background while you're doing, um, you know, I don't know, while you're, you're having 